Uh, <clears throat> well, the positives are, again, being that we're, we've been here. Uh, a lot of our install has kind of gone to review, especially guys that are here. So a lot of that is, uh, I said, when, when you're teaching them something, when it just comes to defense coverage, movement, pressure, whatever, you're teaching it just on the board, say, hey, this is how you do it. But we've gotten to that point now where we're advanced, say, hey, if the offense does this, if the offense does that, hey, if we get this route, you're able to advance it a lot more so that they're not just worried about, oh, that's the blitz. It's more so, okay, this is what I do when this blitz is called. So that part of it's been really good for our players, uh, guys that have been in it, um, uh, and, and especially where we have depth. You know, when we talk about guys that are coming back, you know, that front seven, uh, we've got guys that have played a lot of football games, played a lot of snaps and, and uh, quality snaps. It's the back end where we have guys that are, you know, catching up a little bit. And maybe this extra time has been good for them. Obviously, you don't get a normal spring. You don't get a normal summer. Uh, but really, these last three weeks, as we've started to kind of sit there and say, hey, we're playing a game, it's kind of become a little more normal. There's still things we're picking up and catching up on. But, uh, but, but that's the big thing for us as, we're, as we see ourselves where we're at. It's like we still have a, a ways to go in that back end, getting our guys ready and right uh, as we go up against uh, SEMO. Very good. I uh, have one more question for you, Coach, and I want to shift gears uh, and talk a little bit about Jeremy Chin, who's obviously had a, a great uh, start in the NFL. Uh, you coached the safeties last year, so you're very familiar with him. I'd just like you to give us your impression of how he's performed so far. Yeah, not surprised. I mean, that's been the uh, uh, good and bad, I guess, of all this COVID stuff. Uh, you don't get to see a lot of Salukis making plays on Saturdays, but you're seeing a lot of Salukis making plays on Sundays. And so that's that's been fun. Uh, I've gotten a chance to uh, watch every single one of his games, you know, live as they go. And I'm not surprised. Uh, you know, he, he's, he's always been a guy, uh, high work ethic, preparation's never been an issue, and then has the skill set to do a lot of things. I mean, they're playing him a little bit of everywhere, linebacker, outside linebacker. He's in the box. He's walked. And he's a back safety. So... Seeing him have the success that he's having doesn't surprise me at all. I think the fun stuff is we even talk to our players and I talk to my kids at home. It's like even after the play is over, like Chin's still moving. You know, you see that in the film last year. He's running back to the huddle, getting himself back on. And uh, he doesn't stop on the football field. And he's always in a position uh, to, to get himself ready to go for that next play and uh, or, or he's there making the play. So those are, those are the things. It's been fun to watch, fun to follow, and uh, just super proud of him, uh, but not surprised. And, uh, you know, it, just getting a little taste of, of what he's capable of being here in these first, you know, handful of weeks in the NFL. Excited to see him grow and, and get better for the rest of the season, but also uh, in the years to come. Okay, this time we're going to open it up to the media. And a reminder to unmute your microphone. We'll go first to uh, Barry Patino with questions. Hi, Coach. Uh, Tom obviously talked about your points per game coming down quite a bit last year. So you as a defensive coordinator, are there specific numbers that you look at and determine success with your defense? I think the things that we try to harp on all the time uh, is, you know, takeaways and stops. Uh, you know, anything where we could get a drive kill, a drive kill to us is anything from a third down stop to a punt or maybe even a fourth down if a team chooses to go for it on fourth down, which we're seeing more and more. Uh, takeaways, takeaways are critical, but we're always talking about, like, um, drive kills, things like that. Um, we don't get too involved in points or yards or anything like that. It's like, man, we just got to get stops. When we go on the field, it's our job to get stops, whether they're punting the ball, whether we're taking it away, uh, try to limit those things. And the next thing that we look at is explosive plays for touchdowns. You know, we're, there's going to be chunk plays. Uh, you know, an offense is going to scheme up and have something. They've got, you know, scholarship, really good players. They're going to have plays designed for those players. So it's important for us that – uh, all those chunk plays come, let's make sure they're, they still got to snap the ball again and we're not giving up explosives for touchdowns. So we talk about that like drive stops, um, takeaways, and then uh, prevent uh, explosive plays for touchdowns are the things that we talk about pretty regularly week in and week out. Coach Hill had mentioned uh, Anthony Knighton had, had really taken charge of the D-line group uh, during this time when everybody was kind of apart. I wanted to ask you about share just what type of leader Anthony is and maybe some examples of how his leadership comes out. I think the, he's a very quiet leader. He's just a quiet personality, uh, especially around these buildings. I think when he's around his friends, he's probably a little more opened up a little bit. But in this building and around his teammates, he, he's very quiet. Uh, he doesn't need to speak loud, 
because his actions take care of everything else. Uh, I think the thing that you really saw is some of our younger D linemen, especially before COVID happened, we're talking like January, February, leading up into spring ball. I mean, his lifting group, if they had a couple of extra D linemen, I mean, they would follow him to the turf or follow him out to the field and they'd get, you know, field work done, uh, you know, outside of the lift. And he was always taking, you know, three to four of those young D linemen. And, and really, it's like, it was work he was going to do. But what you see is other guys kind of go to him. And then over the summertime, that, that list grew uh, bigger and bigger. And so he, he's always been a guy that's uh, willing to work and do the work and whatever it takes. And you're seeing uh, his teammates you know, see the success that he's had. So they're following him out there. And uh, that, that's definitely the thing that Knighton's always going to be. He's not going to be the rah-rah guy, the Ray Lewis guy. Um, but he's definitely going to be the guy that's going to go out there and work, get himself prepared. And our players see the success that he's had, and they want to emulate that. And so they're out there with him during those times. You know, around the Valley, we've seen, uh, you know, Romeo McKnight, Illinois State, has gone on to the FBS. F- F- uh, Ellerson Smith, that you and I, is preparing for the NFL draft. With, with those two in mind, um, how should people in the Valley and nationally in the FBS um, view Anthony when it comes to elite pass rushers? You know, uh, he's, a, he's a, a combination of athleticism and power. Um, and the thing about it, too, that you don't see on is he studies a lot of film. Uh, he knows what his strengths and his weaknesses are. He knows who he's going to emulate when it comes to the type of NFL guys that he wants to watch, and he's going to study those people. And then it's our job as coaches to put him in some situations where he's getting some, some one-on-one blocks or an opportunity to make a play. Um, but, but like I said, that's the thing about Knighton. I mean, none of that stuff's important to him. He just wants to, he just wants to win. Um, the recognition of all conference and all, all American stuff, it's really just, it's just about winning. What do I got to do to win? And that's kind of the attitude that he's had since I've been around him. Obviously, he, he achieved some success uh, awards, post, postseason awards, you know, in his first couple years. Um, and, uh, you know, those are the things. But I think if you were to ask him, it would be more important to win than any of that stuff. Are there specific guys that Anthony watches or that you kind of kind of turn him on to, to to say, hey, watch what this guy does? I know Coach Chuka, Coach P work a, a lot of time with that uh, in terms of identifying film okay. uh, guys, whether it's a D line or an individual. But but those are those are things I know that they, that they've talked to him about. Last one I have for you, Coach, was um, that the losses you guys have had mainly on defense have been on the back end with Jeremy and whatnot. Um, for you, what's the biggest challenge of kind of putting a new group together like that and, and getting the chemistry down? Yeah, it's, you know, we, we looked at last year's game. You know, going into the season, there, there was, you know, a lot of optimism and things like that, but, but for, for various reasons, the, the guys that we have right now, but they're eager to, to, to prove themselves. They're eager for their opportunity. Um, you talk about guys, like I said, you put on the SEMO game. Uh, the guys that started that game on the back end aren't going to be playing in this game. So it's getting our guys that we have to understand what they need to do, but also know that the guys that we have don't have the same skill set of the guys that were out there. Obviously, there's nobody that's going to replace a Jeremy Chin. Um, but at the same time, it's like, what does that individual do well that we could put him in a situation where he can play at a high level and do the things we need him to do? But like I said, the guys that have been on our program, you know, JT's gotten a lot of reps, especially second half of the season when he was starting. Uh, PJ Jules is a guy that played a ton of special teams for us. Um, you know, he, he's the guy we're, we're leaning on and counting on. Um, and then you got Joe P, who's done a lot of things for us for the Saluki defense the last two years. Uh, played a lot of positions for us a year ago, um, but but doesn't have a lot of starts. But but he's eager for the opportunity. And then the guys that have come in that we've brought in mainly over the summertime. You know, it's asking them to learn how we do things. Obviously, where they were at. And, you know, football's football. It's terminology that changes. But for us, too, we haven't gotten a chance to spend a lot of time around them, whether it was the spring or summer, and kind of thrown together as, as we go. We've spent the most time around them really this last three weeks as we, as we prepare for a football game. Thank you, Coach. Okay, next up, we'll move to Mike Reese with questions. But Jason, who, who are the top candidates to replace Shannon as a leader of the entire defense? And... What do you think this defense needs in terms of a leader? Um, you know, the guys that stand out right away, uh, Bryce Notree and Bryson Strong are two inside linebackers, are two guys that they're definitely going to bring that energy and that enthusiasm out to the practice field and their preparations. 
Uh, I think as, as they're doing well, we, we feed off of them for sure. Um, but then you get up front, it's the lunch pail guys, the Knightons, the uh, Blake Parzich, and even Keenan. I mean, those are guys that are, they're just going to come to work. They're not going to be the raw, raw guys. Uh, but, but really, Bryce and, and Bryce Sun are the two guys definitely that, uh, as a defense, we feed off in terms of their energy. And we expect a lot of things of them. But the nice thing is they expect a lot of things of themselves as well. And then, Mike, say your second half of that question. Yeah, go ahead. Well, the qualities, is that what you're saying? What are we looking for in the qualities? I think, I think the thing, some yeah, of it's going to. it seemed like you, you played so much better when, not just because Chin was a good player, but it seemed like he provided you in t- intangibles, too. Yeah, totally. And that, I think every team, you know, I call it the Tim Duncan theory. It's until your best players are your hardest workers and the ones that the coaches can hold accountable the most, um, that's when you're going to have success as a team. And obviously, you could do that with Chan, but I think you can do the same thing with, with No Tree and, and Bryson Strong as well, and other guys uh, to challenge them. But also, as you're challenging them, you're also challenging others within the defense to make sure that they're doing things right. Uh, so, so those are the things that, that we're definitely going to miss with Chan, honestly. And uh, but, but again, the guys are eager. Uh, guys have been in this program. Uh, when you talk about No Tree and, and uh, Bryson Strong, they've been in this program for you know, three and four years. So they know kind of what the standard and the expectations are, excuse me, four and five years, but they know what the expectation of the standards of the program are. And they're willing to, to put themselves out there and uh, be challenged by their coaches, but also know that they've got to set the example to their teammates. Yeah, one other question. How good can you be in this game, Jason? First time out. You know, it's going to be weird. Like I said, I've watched probably more football than I, I would have liked or that I ever have. But, but the thing about it, I think defensively, the big key is going to be as you watch is, is tackling. I think that we'll get a really good idea where we're at and, uh, in terms of either how well or how poorly we're tackling. Um, I think those are going to be the things you're seeing across the board on defenses. I think in those first two games, there was a statistic out there. The team that rushed the ball the most was the team that won. Um, obviously, they're running for big plays. and getting chunk yards, but the other defense is missing a lot of tackles. So I think that's the big thing for us as we take this game on with SEMO. Obviously, uh, they've had success the last handful of years running the football, and that's something that we've got to do a great job of uh, preventing uh, as much as possible and try to get them in the, the third and longer situations. Thank you. Okay, next let's move to Connor Onion's questions. Hey, hey, Coach. Um, you're talking about watching a lot of football this fall. Uh, I was just curious which NFL defensive coordinators, rather college defensive coordinators, have you stolen some stuff from since you've had a lot of time to watch? Yeah, that's the scary part. I, I, my, the, the other defensive staff is always checking on me because uh, there's a lot of things that look really, really good. I think during COVID time, we got a little football overload, and all of a sudden we have about – you know, 30 other ideas that we think are really good. And then you put them on paper, you study them. You say, oh, yeah, this fits us, this fits us. And then you get out there, it's like, yeah, this isn't who we are. We're not seeing this from an offense. You know, it's probably not a great call about what we see in the Valley. But you can get a little overload. And that's important, too, is what can your kids handle? Um, I think for me, like I said, I've robbed and steal from all kinds of people, whether it's on offense, defense, uh, special forces, uh, coaching, preparation, all that stuff. But it's really about what your kids do well. And as I've said, I mean, the guys like Chin and uh, Dre and, and some of the guys that played a lot of football for us a year ago uh, doesn't necessarily fit the guys that we have in our room now. So it's important to put those guys in a situations where they can be successful. But uh, when, you, when you're looking at college football and you're, and you're looking at NFL coordinators, uh, you know, like I said there's a lot of great ones out there. It's just trying to find out which are the ones that are doing it um, and, and getting the most out of their players. And I always say, what are the ones that are the, the most fundamental when it comes to techniques, um, movements, but also schemes? Because uh, like I said, there can be some bad ideas that look really, really bad if, uh, if an offense uh, kind, of, kind of finds your weakness and is able to attack you. You uh, mentioned some of the newcomers, especially on the back end. Uh, which of those newcomers have you been most impressed with so far in the fall? Um, well, like I said, there is, it's weird, like with COVID, no new normal or anything like that. But like I said, JT, who's a, a guy that um, has come in and, and really taken the leadership room and the corner room, um, sets the standard in terms of work ethic and the attitude there. But between him and PJ, uh, it's been really good uh, to, to get those guys going. 
um, uh, other corners uh, that stand out, uh, you know, uh, Rod and Nigel, and then a guy that really redshirted last year, uh, Chance Bush, you know, based on some of our depth at corner. And then also he played as a true freshman, so he had a redshirt. So he played four games a year ago, redshirted. Um, so he's got game experience from playing as a true freshman. Uh, but, but, but those guys have, you know, as much as they can, get them in, get them reps, and get them ready. And then in the safety, safety room, like I said, I, I mentioned Joe P already. Uh, he, he's a guy that, that's played a lot of snaps at three different positions for us a year ago. I think he feels very, very comfortable in terms of what we're asking him uh, to do. And then you talk about that, that next set of guys, you know, Aaron Maddox, who joined us in January. Uh, so he's been around the defense a little bit, hasn't gotten the reps that obviously we would have liked uh, if he had a spring and a summer. Um, and then uh, 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 Tanner Coram, who, who came originally as a DB that's moved to receiver uh, last fall, but now he's back in the, in the secondary. He's been working really, really hard, uh, playing a couple positions for us. Um, Clayton Bush from Western Kentucky that's come in, another guy that's uh, uh, shown that, that he can play some football and kind of excited to see what he can do as, as the bullets fly and, and, and we get going. And then other guys like Jakari, uh, who is a redshirt freshman, Safety, and then you know, at, at, at other safety name is Jeff Wells, a, a true freshman uh, who's worked really, really hard. So that, that kind of a handful of names right there. I, I feel bad; I'm probably missing somebody out that's doing a good job too. But as a whole, like I said, I think they're uh, eager uh, to be given an opportunity to go out and uh, put himself in a, put themselves in situations where, where where we hope to have some success. Uh, who do you consider the fastest player on your defense right now? I'm sorry, could you repeat the question? Yeah, who do you consider the, the fastest player on your defense right now? Oh, man. I don't know. Like I said, that, that just goes to show you, like, you haven't really had a lot of chance to get out and train and run, uh, honestly. Um, like 40 time, there's some guys that I would guess, and then football speed, there's some other guys I would guess, too. I, I don't know. I know I'm going to upset somebody if I, if I don't call them the fastest. So I'll, just, I'll say it's Coach Chuka right now is the fastest on our defense. Yeah, and that, that's the thing, too. Uh, improvement, I, I think a guy that, you know, we, we a little shot in the arm of Blake Parzic. I think a guy that, um, you know, over his time here, he kind of got the, the bonus year with the red shirt gear last fall. He's able to play now, and uh, he's really improved. Uh, taken to the coaching, uh, kind of changed his body a little bit, moving around a little bit better. Uh, but Blake's definitely shown a lot of improvement. And then uh, Raquan's another D end. Uh, that, again, continues to get better. Uh, he played a lot of snaps a year ago, uh, didn't have the production that he wanted or we expect from him, but we're excited to kind of see where he's gone. He's put a lot of work and effort to, to, to help himself become a better D end and every down D end. Um, but in terms of how many of those bodies you're going to play, man, be ready for all of them to play. Uh, that's the thing. Well, I, I list all those DBs up because a lot of those guys, they've got to play multiple positions because, you know, at any point in time you get a call, somebody tests positive or there's contact trace where they can't play. It's like we got to teach everybody every position, uh, whether it's on the front, in the back end, so that they're able to, to handle the things, uh, which, which, like I said, it's good. Our guys can be multiple like that, but it's, you know, you got to make sure that they're able to, to handle playing multiple positions. Um, I don't know. Uh, I'll let you ask them and then tell me what they tell you. Uh, I, like I said, they, they've had a lot of success the last two years. Uh, obviously, Coach Took and that offensive staff's done a, a great job. You talk about the last two years, uh, being in the playoffs both years, uh, putting up a lot of points, putting up a lot of yards. Uh, but I think as you really fundamentally break them down, they, they want to run the football. Uh, they want to run the football, uh, be able to run it no matter what the box looks like. Um, and that's going to be the tremendous challenge. You talk about a year ago, they had a lot of uncertainty at O-line. But now coming back, they've got really uh, you know, all but one of their starters back on O-line. But I think all of their guys listed, at least as the starter, have um, started a game or more a year ago. Uh, and then the running backs, uh, they were always you know, a ton of bodies in the running back room. 
in terms of uh, the bodies that they played. Um, I think they feel really, I mean, I would, I would feel really good with those running backs back there. They look pretty good. And then, um, you know, they got healthy at tight end. Uh, we didn't see their starting tight end a year ago, but, but uh, he played a little bit. He got hurt before us, but I know he's back. Uh, like I said, I'm sure they feel really good about them. And then the, the quarterback, too. I mean, he's a, he's a guy that <clears throat> uh, you look at what he was able to do at Nebraska and you look at all of his other film that, that he has out there. I mean, he's a guy that's a capable runner as well. Um, so uh, they're definitely, like I said, the strength is between their old line, their running backs, and I know obviously receivers, they have guys coming back too that have uh, made a lot of plays for them as well. Uh, and, and I'll go back and say they had a lot of success with that offense the last two years. I anticipate a lot of similarities within the offense. Um, you know, the guy that's gotten better again, he came in red shirted, um, and then, uh, suited up a couple of games, but Tylen driver, uh, is a guy that, that, that's had a really good, you know, one of those guys that kind of got in the follow uh, night and around in, in January and February. And then this summer, um, a guy we brought in over the, uh, uh, uh Devin love, um, uh, another guy that, that we brought in, uh, that's, uh, came in in January with Aaron. Um, you know, like I said, he, he's got the athleticism. It's just making sure he has the conditioning to be able to sustain a drive and be out there and be a, a guy. But he's a big body. Uh, and when he's playing with great technique and pad level, he, he's, he's looked really good. And then, you know, a couple of those freshmen that we brought in, we brought three defensive tackle freshmen in that uh, we fit, we're really excited about, honestly. Um, and it, I'm eager to see those guys kind of uh, how they perform in situations. You know, we've been able to do a little bit of scrimmaging and, and very limited basis. Um, and at times they've looked really, really good. And at times you're like, yeah, he's still a, a freshman. Uh, but but the times they look good, we're excited about them for, for years to come for sure. And what kind of difference does Mikhail Calhoun make for your defense? You know, another guy that's pretty mobile or multiple, uh, you know, you go back and you put the film on from a year ago, he, uh, was very productive uh, in the place uh, that, that he was out there. And I think uh, he has a really great grasp of our defense. Another guy, again, it was like, hey, this is what you do on this blitz. Hey, this is what you do on this coverage. But now he's seeing the whole picture. It's like, how do I respond to the pitcher? When it, he can anticipate movements, whether it's motions or you know anything like that, and be ready for his next call rather than processing and overthinking it. But, uh, you know, he's really grown from a mental standpoint in terms of understanding our defense, um, being able to adjust on the fly, whether it's movements and things like that, and still be very, very productive. You know, what makes him difficult to block when you watch the film? Kel, he's, he's kind of wiry, honestly. Uh, you know, he's, he's, he, you get around him, if you forget when I'm around him all the time, it's like, you know, but, but he gets out there, he stands out a little bit. You know, he uh, moves well out in space. Uh, you know, can be around the box and, and, and do some things, not afraid to get physical and things like that. But uh, just does a really good job of, you know, kind of being wiry and being able to bend and, and, and get in there and make a play when he needs to make a play. Uh, 